Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the overall concept of accrual accounting. All right, I'd like to start off this video with a question for you to think about. And that question is this. If you own a business and a potential investor wants to know what is your total revenue for the past three months, which of these options do you feel is more appropriate to report to them? Option one, revenue for all the sales you've made, even if you have not collected a large portion of the cash for those sales yet. Not because customers don't look like they're going to pay, but simply because the invoices haven't come due. Or B, revenue only for the sales for which the customers have paid you. In other words, cash collected. The main difference between these two options being in one case, you're giving them a larger revenue number. That would be option A but you don't have all of that in cash. So there is the possibility you don't get paid. Or B, a smaller revenue number representing only the cash that you've received so far, but you might actually be getting more later. Which of these do you think it's more appropriate to give to an investor? Now, I would encourage you, pause the video, think on a minute and ask yourself, if you're the investor, which of these numbers would you like? Or as the question is posed, if you're the business owner, which do you think is more appropriate to give? Remember, the whole point of accounting is to give decision useful information. All right, well, hopefully you took a minute and paused the video and, and, and now you're back. Um, there's no right answer to this. You could give the investor either one in just a non-regulated, you know, not corporate accounting US GAAP world. You could give the investors either one. But these two answers represent the difference between what's known as accrual accounting and cash accounting. And in fact, option A represents what's known as accrual accounting. Option B represents what's known as cash basis accounting. Now, the biggest difference between these, as, as we pointed out, is, is the recognition of revenue dependent on the cash received? In option A, it is not, right? It doesn't matter if the customer has paid you you give investors the sales that have been made or been fulfilled, even if you haven't gotten paid. That's called accruing the revenue. That's accrual accounting. Cash basis accounting, on the other hand, is the only thing that matters is, did you get paid? So you are only going to report the sales for which you've gotten the money. That's cash basis accounting. Now, if we wanted to sum up accrual accounting in a nutshell, apart from the example that I just gave you, it's this. Accrual accounting is the recognition of revenues when they are earned or when the obligation has been fulfilled and expenses when they are incurred. So when we say incurred, we mean when did the cost actually take place? When did the business lose value as a result of this thing that was done? And notice this key part right here. This is the key. Regardless of when cash is exchanged, so in an accrual accounting world, we don't care when cash changes hands from a standpoint of revenue and expense, an income statement standpoint, if you will. These are governed by what's known as the revenue recognition principle and the expense recognition principle. And those two principles essentially say what is up top here, right? Recognize revenues when earned. That's the revenue recognition principle. Recognize expenses when incurred. That's the expense recognition principle. Interesting enough, you'll hear the expense recognition principle often referred to as the matching principle. It's kind of an unofficial nickname. The reason it has that nickname is by expensing costs when incurred, they tend to match up to their related revenues. For example, think about a lawn mowing business. You incur a cost as you cut a lawn. You're using up gas. You're getting wear and tear on your equipment, you're incurring man hours, your labor, right, as you cut the grass. And so that would be expense incurred. Regardless of when you paid for the gas, regardless of when you pay for maintenance on the equipment, regardless of when you pay your employees, it doesn't matter. While they cut the lawn, they are incurring the cost of cutting the lawn. And notice, by cutting the lawn, you are also earning the money from cutting the lawn. So therefore, the expenses have been matched to the revenues as a result of these two principles. The main difference there versus cash accounting is that same scenario, let's take it in a cash system, that same scenario, when you buy the gas, that would be an expense in the cash, um, 
cash basis accounting system. Like literally when you pay for the gas at the gas station, when you pay for the maintenance on the equipment, when you pay your employees, which all of those, if you think about it, could happen at different times, right? You have to buy the gas in advance of using it. You pay for maintenance after the usage of, of, of the uh, equipment. And you might pay your employees only twice a month or something, right? Versus they'll be cutting lawns every day. And so it, the, the, the costs don't really line up with the job being done in a cash basis system. Likewise, the revenue, even though you have performed your job by cutting the lawn, in a cash world, you don't get to record revenue until you get paid. So by the time you invoice your customer, your customer writes you a check or pays you cash, that's when you get the revenue, which could be far removed from the time you actually did the job. So that's cash accounting. Accrual accounting was that first scenario I described where doing the job earns the revenue, using up your resources incurs the cost, and usually because of these principles, those line up with one another. All right, with that said, why would you choose to use accrual accounting over the cash basis system? Cash basis is pretty easy to track, right? Cash in, cash out. Well, US GAAP actually requires the use of accrual accounting. And some of the biggest reasons for that is what follows. First of all, accrual account accounting follows the periodicity assumption. We break up our time into artificial periods and we can track what economic activity has occurred in that period. Notice it doesn't matter if cash occurs in period one or period two or period three. If you economically did something in period one, it gets recorded in period one. If you economically do something in period two, it gets recorded in period two. So accrual accounting is consistent with periodicity assumption. It's also a more accurate portrayal of business activity. If you mowed the lawn in period one, but you don't get paid till say period three, well, it doesn't make sense to say you earned a revenue in period three, right? Yeah, that's when the cash came in, but that's not when you did the job. That's not when you actually conducted the business activity. So accrual accounting better portrays the actual business activity that takes place. And by using accrual accounting, there's just a lot less volatility. Go back to that lawn example I used, right? If you spend cash for gas at one point in time, you spend cash for maintenance at another, you spend cash for um, uh, your employees at another, there's a lot of volatility in your cash flows because amidst those three points in time, you don't even know when the customer's gonna pay. And so your cash flows go up and down and up and down. And so your revenue also goes up and down and up and down. Under accrual accounting, because you match up your revenues and your expenses, they essentially net against each other and show a steady flow of the profitability of your business over time, rather than these spikes of up and down. So these are all the good reasons to use accrual accounting. I will point out at this point that there is one instance of cash basis accounting that is very prevalent in modern accounting, and that's for taxes. Taxes typically follow a cash basis system. The IRS wants to know what cash did you receive, and they want their cut of it. They don't worry about accrual accounting. Okay, just want to point that out. Now, in the last slide, I talked about benefits of accrual accounting and why you're going to use it. Um, there are some dangers to accrual accounting, though, that are worth pointing out. First of all, because you recognize revenues and expenses as earned or as incurred, management can actually plan the timing of those earnings or of those expense incurrences in order to kind of achieve a goal. So they may have an earnings target, right? We expect you to earn, let's say, a dollar per share of stock. That's, that's say, what an analyst puts on, on, on their expectations for a quarter or for a year. Well, management may say, you know what? Um, we're running short of that. So some of these costs, maybe we pay for them up front. We prepay so that we can get things moving. But let's say we postpone getting the service until next period. Therefore, we haven't actually incurred the cost. So you can kind of move your expenses around. You can do a similar thing with revenue. So there's some manipula manipulability that comes out of um, accrual accounting. Okay. Um, the main reason I point this out, it's not that all earnings management is bad. Sometimes managers are managing earnings in the interest of the shareholders. However, sometimes they're managing earnings in a way that will benefit themselves the most, maybe to hit a bonus goal, something of that nature, and that may not be in the best interest of the company. Um, I have on here potential to lower the quality of earnings. If we think about how uh, uh, high or low quality your earnings are, 
Earnings that are full transparency, in other words, um, you don't mislead or confuse the financial statement users. They see what's going on. It's very clear what the business activity is. That would be considered high quality earnings. And so to the extent that managers use accrual accounting to manage those earnings and move revenues and expenses to, they, to where they otherwise wouldn't fall, um, that creates a situation of misleading financial statements. Um, and so that in itself would, would, would cause financial statements to lower in quality. So this is the downside to accrual accounting, but that downside is, is fairly rare, I would say, in the grand scheme of things. The benefits far outweigh it. All right, that's your overview of the concept of accrual accounting. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.